Hey everyone, it's Todd Riddle with Factor. My friends at Cairo Up just sent me a new article uh, out of Egypt that was talking about the use of kinesiology tape and postural corrective exercise to help reduce neck pain as well as change muscle function in the cervical spine. Now, in this article, it talked about the positive effects of utilizing both the tape and exercise together. Uh, the tape being a component where perhaps there was a mechanical effect, maybe it changed the length tension relationship in the muscles. Uh, and also there's a proprioceptive effect, uh, possibly with the application of the tape. Now, with Factor, we still utilize tape as well as with exercise, but our approach is a little bit different. Instead of using kinesiology tape, which doesn't have near as much stretch and can actually reach a ridged endpoint, we tape biomechanically using something called dynamic tape. Now, if you're not familiar with dynamic tape, it's in a different category. It's called biomechanical taping, which is not the same as kinesiology tape, which tends to be a bit more neurophysiological. We're still applying it to the skin, obviously, but this has a very high viscoelastic effect. It's got a lot of stretch because of its components made from nylon and lycra. Now, in the next two videos, what you're going to see is how within the factor system, we utilize biomechanical taping or dynamic tape along with postural corrective exercises to reduce pain and restore muscle function in the cervical spine. So in this video, we're going to be covering what we call the cervical offload. But before we get started, I want to introduce to you 2018 Winter Olympian, Mr. Anthony Watson. Uh, we're happy to have him with us as a model so we can do a little bit of taping. So. We're gonna cover a cervical offload. Now the idea behind the cervical offload is we're gonna take the weight of our patient's arms and retransfer it back into the cervicothoracic junction, which means we're basically gonna take all of the stress and the weight that the arms are putting into the traps and re remove that or relieve that through the use of the tape. Now there are a couple of things we need to keep in mind here. The longer the tape, the better purchase we're going to get on the arms, therefore the better the offload. Something else we want to keep in mind here is that when we're taping females, obviously undergarments, bras or sports bras, can tend to be a bit of an obstacle when we're taping over the shoulders. So one thing you want to keep in mind is making sure that they wear a bra that will either allow the straps to come down or you'll end up having to rope them appropriately or wear some kind of towel or sheet so that you can get access to the skin. Now, I've uh, pre-cut a piece of the tape here, and the way that we're gonna measure for this is directly over top of the shoulders. So from this application, I basically come up about two or three inches from the lateral epicondyle. I'll go over the top of the shoulders, and then just a little bit short on the opposite arm so that whatever little stretch I do put into the tape is actually going to be accounted for, and we should end up with an even application on both sides. So for the ease of your being able to see what we're trying to do here, I'm just gonna have Anthony turn around for me, all the way around there. Now normally I'd be taping from behind, but it's gonna be easier for you at home to see what we're trying to do with him in this, in this position. Now, it's extremely important that you remember, all of our tape applications are applied with the patient in a shortened position, which means I'm actually gonna have Anthony shrug his shoulders up so that when I put the tape on and he relaxes his shoulders, the tape is actually gonna go into its stretched position and apply the offload that we're seeking here. So I'm actually gonna have him tuck his head forward just a little bit there, and we're gonna have him shrug his shoulders. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind about the tape here. When we're applying the anchors, we want no stretch around the anchors, okay? That stretch tends to put a little bit too much traction into the skin and can actually create irritation and blisters. So that's very important here. I also want about a four inch or so anchor. Now, uh, I'm using the three inch tape here as opposed to the two inch tape, for especially for athletes. I want a bit more offload, so therefore I'm gonna use the wider tape here. So I give about a four or so inch anchor and I'm gonna give that tape a tear just like that, the paper. Now, to avoid touching the actual tape and getting my finger oil onto the adhesive, I simply pull that tab back and reflect it so that I can hold onto the paper. So what I'm gonna do here is start about three inches above his elbow and that part of the tape that's exposed, I'm gonna get started and then pull that paper out creating no tension around that, uh, around that piece of tape. Because you can see here, 
If I do put tension on the tape, all of that tension is going to be transferred into the skin and we could get blistering around that tape. So if we see redness around that tape, we know we've put too much tension into that anchor and therefore run the possibility of creating blisters. What I'm going to do next is reflect that paper back just a little bit and try to pull this back enough so that I can get uh, some clearance to run the tape over top of his traps. Now, something I'm going to do here is very important. I'm going to take these three fingers and I'm going to traction down on the tape and slide my finger up this way so now I have all of this tape where there's no tension on that anchor. What I'm going to do next is bring this tape down across his shoulder and I'm not putting any stretch into that tape. Just enough stretch to just take the slack out. So you see when I let go there, it starts to wrinkle. So I want to make sure I keep just enough tension into the tape that um, that we, we don't get any slack in that tape. So I'm gonna run my fingers right over top and I'm aiming right for that cervical thoracic junction, right over top there. And we're gonna bring that paper out from underneath. I'm gonna keep taking the tension off and then right down to there. So we're a little long on this side and you know what, that's okay if that happens. If it's gonna be a big problem, you can always just cut that piece of tape off. We're gonna smooth this out. We wanna hold on to the edges for about 30 seconds, but for the sake of time, we're going to let that go. And Anthony's gonna relax his shoulders. And you can see when he lets his shoulders down, the tape begins to stretch. And that's where we get the offload of the, the arms, transferring the weight of his arms through the tape, out of the traps and into the cervical thoracic junction. So in this segment, we're gonna cover the resistance part of the factor concepts. Uh, again, what we're using is our assessment where we found pain, but now what we're gonna to try to do is actually load. So by coming to this portion of the concepts, we've basically cleared up most or any pain or restriction that we had with motion, and now it should be kind of logical that we wanna load those same patterns to see, one, if we're getting pain, but also, two, just to create some more strength. So we've got three different cervical exercises that we're gonna go through. One is gonna focus primarily on the flexors and the extensors. Uh, one is gonna focus on lateral flexors, and then one is also gonna focus on um, rotation. We're gonna be using a TheraBand. In this instance, we're just using a simple, red latex TheraBand, so a little word of caution there. We always want to make sure that we have a patient wearing some kind of safety glasses, but also because these are made of latex, we want to be very cognizant of latex sensitivities. If your patient does have a latex sensitivity, obviously we want to use some kind of vinyl band, perhaps one of the CLX bands. So the first one that we're going to go through is a simple flexion exercise. So she's going to take the band and open it up and actually wrap it around the back of her head. She's going to sit up nice and tall and she's going to retract her chin and then extend her hands away from her body. So I'm going to have her relax just for one second. So that's the setup for that. What I want to mention here is instead of allowing the patient to do internal pacing, I actually like to download a metronome onto my phone or their phone because these are going to be home-based exercises so that they can actually do the exercises to the beat of the metronome. In this instance, I have it set it to 60 beats per minute or one beat per second. So she would likely hold for, say, 10 beats and then retract or let, allow the band to come back for 10 beats and then hold for 10 beats again. And we may go through five or six sets of 10 beats. So just to give you an example, so she's going to sit up nice and tall. She's going to extend her hands away from her head again. She's going to make sure that chin is retracted. And then I would have her hold against the tune of the metronome for 10 beats. And we won't go through the whole thing. She can relax now. But the idea here is this. When we are trying to... When we're trying to stimulate neuroplasticity, it's not just about the strength and the kinesthetic awareness she's getting. We're also trying to bring other senses in as well. So in this instance, it's the sound of the beat that's actually stimulating certain parts of her brain as well, again, driving neuroplasticity. So that was going to be uh, flexion. Now, what I did not mention was if she got any pain with this, I would simply take my instrument again and treat the area that she was experiencing pain or perhaps some, some tightness. The next exercise we're going to do is for lateral flexion. So we'll just assume maybe we found some weakness with lateral flexion on the right side. So what I'm going to ask her to do is wrap the band around her head and now pull to the opposite side. So right lateral flexion was the problem. So we're going to have her pull in the opposite direction. So you're going to sit up nice and tall. 
and she's going to extend her hand away. She's going to keep her nose centered towards the, the front. And again, I would turn on my metronome here. But again, if she was getting any kind of pain on this right side, I could come in here with my instrument and treat that area of pain. I could do my sweep strokes, my scoop strokes, whatever I found most appropriate for the situation. Okay? The last exercise we would do in order to uh, strengthen rotation or anti-rotation is an exercise where she's going to wrap the band around the front of her head. And I generally like to ask for the patient to double it over because it keeps the band from slipping and it kind of tightens it down on the forehead. So she's going to sit up nice and tall, chin retracted. And again, maybe we had a problem with right rotation. So she's going to keep her right hand in this position here and extend her left hand out to the side, which basically means it's pulling her out of right rotation towards the left. And again, if this caused any pain, I can take my instrument and treat directly over top of that area of pain. You go ahead and relax. So these are just three simple exercises using a TheraBand to strengthen the cervical spine. Again, keep in mind, there is research to suggest that weakness in the cervical muscles, specifically in the, uh, the deep cervical flexors, does have some correlation to neck pain. So one of the ways that I have found to combat that is simply start strengthening the neck. I hope you found the videos useful and thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the content from the videos, Factor courses, or the products that we use, feel free to reach out to us at factor-store.com.